Things you need to know about the Taj Mahal The Taj Mahal crown of the palace is an ivory white marble mausoleum on the southern bank of the river Yamuna in the Indian city of Agra. The Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan reigned from 1628 to 1658, commissioned it in 1631. It now houses the tomb of his favorite wife, Mumtaz Mahal. It also houses the tomb of Shah Jahan himself. The tomb is the centerpiece of a 42-acre complex, which includes a mosque and a guest house. It is set in formal gardens bounded on three sides by a crenellated wall. Construction of the mausoleum was essentially completed in 1643, but work continued on other phases of the project for another 10 years. The Taj Mahal complex is believed to have been completed in its entirety in 1653 at a cost estimated at the time to be around 32 million rupees, which in 2020 would be approximately 70 billion rupees, about US 9 16 million dollars. The construction project employed some 20,000 artisans under the guidance of a board of architects led by the court architect to the emperor, Ustad Ahmad Lahori. The Taj Mahal was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983 for being the jewel of Muslim art in India and one of the universally admired masterpieces of the world's heritage. It is regarded by many as the best example of Mughal architecture and a symbol of India's rich history. The Taj Mahal attracts 7 to 8 million visitors a year and in 2007, it was declared a winner of the new 7 Wonders of the World 2000 to 2007 initiative. The Taj Mahal was commissioned by Shah Jahan in 1631, to be built in the memory of his wife Muntaz Mahal. She died on 17th of June that year while giving birth to their 14th child, Gauhara Begum. Construction started in 1632, and the mausoleum was completed in 1648, while the surrounding buildings and garden were finished five years later. The imperial court documenting Shah Jahan's grief after the death of Mumtaz Mahal illustrates the love story held as the inspiration for the Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal incorporates and expands on design traditions of Persian and earlier Mughal architecture. Specific inspiration came from successful Timurid and Mughal buildings including the Gore-e-Amir, the Tomb of Timur, progenitor of the Mughal dynasty, in Samarkand. While earlier Mughal buildings were primarily constructed of red sandstone, Shah Jahan promoted the use of white marble inlaid with semi-precious stones. Buildings under his patronage reached new levels of refinement. The tomb is the central focus of the entire complex of the Taj Mahal. It is a large, white marble structure standing on a square plinth and consists of a symmetrical building with an Ewan, which is an arch-shaped doorway. Topped by a large dome and finial. Like most Mughal tombs, the basic elements are Persian in origin. The base structure is a large multi-chambered cube with chamfered corners forming an unequal eight-sided structure that is approximately 55 meters on each of the four long sides. Each side of the Ewan is framed with a huge pishtak or vaulted archway with two similarly shaped arched balconies stacked on either side. This motif of stacked pishtaks is replicated on the chamfered corner areas, making the design completely symmetrical on all sides of the building. Four minarets frame the tomb, one at each corner of the plinth facing the chamfered corners. The main chamber houses the false sarcophagi of Mumtaz Mahal and Shah Jahan, the actual graves are at a lower level. The most spectacular feature is the marble dome that surmounts the tomb. The dome is nearly 35 meters, high which is close in measurement to the length of the base, and accentuated by the cylindrical drum it sits on which is approximately 7 meters high. Because of its shape, the dome is often called an onion dome or a guava dome. The top is decorated with a lotus design which also serves to accentuate its height. The shape of the dome is emphasized by four smaller domed chatras placed at its corners, which replicate the onion shape of the main dome. The dome is slightly asymmetrical. Their column faces open through the roof of the tomb and provide light to the interior. 
Tall decorative spires extend from edges of base walls, and provide visual emphasis to the height of the dome. The lotus motif is repeated on both the Chatras and Gudistas. The dome and Chatras are topped by a gilded finial which mixes traditional Persian and Hindustani decorative elements. The main finial was originally made of gold but was replaced by a copy made of gilded bronze in the early 19th century. This feature provides a clear example of integration of traditional Persian and Hindu decorative elements. The finial is topped by a moon a typical Islamic motif whose horns point heavenward. The minarets, which are each more than 40 meters tall, display the designer's penchant for symmetry. They were designed as working minarets. A traditional element of mosques, used by the muezzin to call the Islamic faithful to prayer. Each minaret is effectively divided into three equal parts by two working balconies that ring the tower. At the top of the tower is a final balcony surmounted by a chatri, that mirrors the design of those on the tomb. The chatras all share the same decorative elements of a lotus design topped by a gilded finial. The minarets were constructed slightly outside of the plinth so that in the event of collapse, a typical occurrence with many tall constructions of the period. The material from the towers would tend to fall away from the tomb. I hope you have benefited from this very informational video. If you have any questions, then do leave it in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell for future video updates.